This is Mercenaries on the Sony PlayStation 2, also available on the Xbox. There was no PC version of this game from what I can gather. And this is a game I owned on the Xbox. I absolutely loved it. There was a sequel, but the sequel was crap, if I remember correctly. But the first game, this game, Mercenaries, is it Playground of Destruction? I think it's the full name of the game. It's brilliant. Brilliant video game. I spent a lot of time with this. I actually bought this game back in the day for my youngest brother. Big shout out to Joe. Joe absolutely loved it. He used to come up to my apartment and he used to play the hell out of this. But um, I would also play it. You know how it goes, guys. You end up buying a video game for loved ones. And then <laughs> it's just a way for you to play the game as well. Anyway, yeah, this got good, really good reviews. This is very highly thought of. And if anyone hasn't played this game before, you get to select from one of three protagonists at the beginning. Three mercenaries. One female character or two male characters. I've gone with one of the male characters, Matthias Nilsson, who is voiced by the dude who is in Fargo. He's one of the main characters. He's like one of the bad guys in Fargo, Steve Buscemi's partner, basically. He's also an 8mm. He's in loads of films. Swedish actor. So yeah, Nilsson, this is the, the dude I would choose back in the day. I think he's on the cover. Oh, actually, all three of them are on the cover, aren't they? three characters but anyway yeah this was highly thought of i love this game it's a sandbox game i've just collected my contract as you can see because the main objective in this game is you've flown over to north korea as a mercenary you're here for a payday you could stand up and sit down watch this <laughs> it's so silly yeah, you've flown over to North Korea, but a fictitious version of North Korea, that's what they claim. But it's, you know, pretty close to what you would have seen on the news around the time, I guess. But it's EA's take on North Korea, I think it's an EA game. And basically you're here to capture or kill the, the bad dude. Like, they're known as a pack of cards, you've got 52 bosses to get. And the main one, the 52nd boss, Ace of Spades, I think they call him in this. Um, yeah, you've got to bring him down. You can either capture the head honchos or you can kill them. So I've already collected one bounty here. I've, I've done the first boss and I captured him rather than kill him. Because if you capture them, you get paid more. You only get half of the bounty if you kill them. That's it in a nutshell. Hope I've explained everything okay. I think I've done all right for a change there. <laughs> Usually I'm not very good at explaining things. Bit of a glitch loading screen or loading graphic there at the bottom right. That'll be emulation related. So there he is, Ace of Spades. General Song is his real name. The most dangerous man on earth. And I loved this game. It is GTA it's a military GTA game of sorts. I absolutely loved it. And because I owned this on Xbox, I bought one of those Max Drive things, which I used to use for my PES 5 option files. But I also used that for this, because there was tons of like cheats you could throw onto this game. Unlimited ammo, um, unlimited money, because cash in this game is essential to everything you do. Right, where am I supposed to go here? Where's, I'm trying to go to this dollar symbol on my mini-map. Um, yeah, cash is vital, basically, as it is in real life. But yeah, you're a mercenary, so the more cash you've got, the more goodies you can buy. You can upgrade your jeeps or your vehicle, get better weapons, etc. But essentially, it is a sandbox. You drive where you want, you do what you want. And you could do things in any order, I think. So I've played for about 30 minutes here before hitting record, just to get to grips with the game again. Got lots of C4 here. Uh, let's have a look at the map. Fiona Taylor is your support operative. She will talk to you and send you emails as the game progresses. She basically helps you out, tells you what's going on. Um... 
Okay, Buford seems like a good lead. Let's pay him a visit. I'm assuming Buford then is the that South Korean flag on the map there. So let's get to that. But yeah, it was the era, or rather it was the time where a lot of the military games we had on the PS2 and the Xbox, and, and some of them on PC, the publishers would always go for the antagonist or the enemy being based in North Korea or sort of Afghanistan areas. And it's like five or ten years prior to that, it would always be Russia with, with the bad guys. And I don't like lazy stereotyping, but with that said, I think this is the only video game I've played where you're based in North Korea. But anyway, I don't know if you see civilians in this game. I think it's purely military focus. I think all the civilians are like hid away because of the warfare and just all the bad stuff happening on the streets here. And the prize money for capturing the Ace of Spades or whatever it is called, was it General Song, is $100 million. So the American government have basically taken a risk by employing one of these mercenaries to do the job for them kind of thing. But yeah, it's a pretty cool, well, it's a very cool game. I'll get to some review scores at some point in the video, but let's play for a bit first. Here we go. So... Okay. Let's collect another mission here. Let's see what they want me to do. But yeah, I think it still looks pretty good for its time. Controls nice and smooth. There's no, like... There's no, like, dodgy funk here that we get sometimes with the older games. The frame rate isn't the best. It's very sluggish when you move the camera or move the right stick to, to look around and that kind of thing. But you get used to it after a while. It's not, you know, it, it's not a big deal. It's just because I'm so used to 60 frames per second in, in current day gaming. Like, we just take it as, or take it for granted now. But I would say that's the only thing that, the only annoyance with this game for me is... Like I say, moving the camera. But apart from that, it's just such an enjoyable game to play, this is. Are you going to be able to work with this guy? Well, if I can, to just go somewhere else. Right. Ah, oh, he's such a good voice actor. It's Peter something, his name. He does a lot of voice acting for a lot of video games as well as being in movies. Troops are attacking the North Defense points. Right. Oh, listen to the music. I forgot how good the music was. Right, let's get... What's that for? So does that cost me $5,000 to use? I think it does. But let's get in here and see if one of the AI CPU dudes jump in. He has. There you go. He's going to start launching the rocket now. Oh, I love this game. It hasn't aged... A... Well, it has aged a day. But it's still damn good. Right, I'll jump onto that turret or that heavy machine gun in a bit. But let's see what this dude can do for me. If I line him up. Line him up with the old enemy jeeps. Well, he's a bit slow though, isn't he? He's a bit slow at um, pulling the trigger on this thing. He's doing a job though, isn't he? I could just sit in there. There's no difficulty options from what I can gather. It's one of those just fire up and play, as was the case with the GTA games. And this game does get quite difficult at some point. It eases you in, though. The music's so good. Right. Okay. Any more? There's going to be more, I think. You get, like, waves of enemies to clear, which is what we kind of get with GTA V multiplayer, I guess. The... I can't remember what that game mode is called in GTA V or GTA Online, but I absolutely love it when it's waves and waves and waves of enemies. I used to absolutely love playing that mode with Dave. Big shout-out to Dave. 
Anyway, back to this game. So, I was saying earlier there was a sequel. The sequel was released again on PS2, Xbox, but also PC. But it was rushed. It felt rushed to me. I did play it. It felt like a cash grab. Based on the success, or on the back of the success of this game, because this did well. They thought, yeah, let's just let's just churn out another one. It wasn't very good, guys. Uh, okay, let's use this then. Oh, I like this gun. It's quite arcadey in a sense. It's like if you like blowing stuff up. It's a very straightforward way to, to do that. And because it's a sandbox, you can just drive anywhere and run anywhere and just destroy everything if you want. But with the money notification, that kind of thing, it does give it an arcadey sort of vibe. But there is depth here. There is quite a lot going on under the hood, if you like, in this game. And it's just super cool. I was just... I remember seeing it. In, we had a shop here where I live called Choices. It was like a video rental chain. You could also get games from there as well. But sometimes they had a little section in the corner of the store that sold games. And I just saw the cover of this. And I was like, I knew nothing about it. I thought, I'm going to take a take a punt here. I'm just going to chance myself here. Chance myself. It's a big risk buying video games. But yeah, I just thought I'd grab it and see what's up. And I was like, Wow absolutely fantastic stuff so let's have a quick look at review scores i've got it on the other monitor here on the wiki ps2 version and xbox version got more or less identical scores guys metacritic xbox version sits at 86 out of 100 ps2 stands at 84 out of 100 so the xbox version slightly better in regards to reviews but the actual reviews in the magazines, like I said earlier, identical. GameZone gave it a 9 out of 10 on PS2. IGN gave it a 9.1 out of 10 on both PS2 and Xbox. Um, the lowest score it got was at Game Informer, which gave it both Xbox and PS2 versions a 7.5 out of 10. That's the lowest score it received. So very, very highly regarded uh, video game so you can see at the top there i'm disguised as south korean basically sometimes when you drive into a camp if you break your disguise they will attack you so these dudes are quite happy rolling with me at the moment because i'm part of their crew or rather i'm disguised as a south korean i'm not sure though if the allies will attack me then like the allies the americans my fellow american troops even though I'm not a troop, I'm a mercenary, but you know what I mean. I, I don't know. I don't think the Allies would, would start shooting at me because they are pretty chummy with the South Korean faction. Okay, I've got Defend K Song. I'm not sh too sure what K Song is or who that is. Okay. But it was just something a little bit different at the time. And it was before, I think I'm right in saying this, it was before San Andreas hit the shops. So we were all hungry for more GTA on PS2. And the PS2 to me was the, was the GTA console. It's what my favourite, at the time, GTA games were on. Even though my favourite GTA games game of all time is gta 4 so i'm kind of contradicting myself there anyway there's an opportunity in Pion oh, i can't say it i'm not gonna try uh doo -doo -doo -doo. okay we can't get into the store yet as my phone pings there sorry guys but yeah here are the dudes these are the dudes we've got to go for basically the two of clubs is the is the guy I was telling you about earlier who I've already captured. I did well. I didn't kill him. I captured him. I got paid more for it. But, um, yeah. They're the bad dudes, basically. Your deck of 52. 
I thought that was pretty nice. A pretty nice. I think that was a pretty cool touch, though. Doing it as as a pack of cards kind of thing. Oh, I got... Um, I remember this. I got to visit some hardcore dude in a nightclub. Which will be this. The opportunity on Pyongyang. There you go. I can say it. Come by our nightclub. There we go. See, my memory's quite good, guys. I hope you're proud of me. Anyone who's a newcomer, you've stumbled across this video, you're like, what is this guy on about? Um, I always tell everyone about my memory not being very good, because it's not very good. But sometimes, sometimes I remember things. Is it? Where is it then? It must, it's not showing on the map when I go into the pause menu. It must be that... It looks like a skull and crossbones on the map, on the mini map. It's not a skull and crossbones, but that's what it looks like. Let's head over there then. I think Pyon Pyongyang is a real place in North Korea. I don't think that's a fictional area of North Korea, but please correct me, guys, if I'm wrong. Oh, I love how this dude has stayed with me. The thing is, are they going to attack me because i got this dude with me when I go into Pyongyang? I don't think. I don't think the game is that strict on the factions thing. Right. Let's just keep going forward. Might have to... Yeah, let's turn right here, I think. Oh, this game is so cool. I'm going to be playing this all day now. I'm off school today because I'm unwell. Um, disclaimer, I don't actually go to school. But we're, we're doing it for, for the effect. For the vibes here. This is old school! So, I would have been in school around... No, I wouldn't have been in school when this game was around. When this game released, sorry. I had my own apartment. <laughs> Deary me. But yeah, I am off school because I'm unwell. So I'm going to be playing this game all day. I went into this thinking, ah, this, this might have aged bad. It hasn't. It's so good. Oh, there's civilians. There are civilians in this game. I don't remember that being a thing. Anyway, is this the nightclub? I think it is. With these two uh, mobsters with baraclavas standing outside the door. Let me into your club. Oh, he's just turning his back on me. He doesn't want to know. Must be around this way. Can I come into your nightclub? You can't walk up the curb. You have to jump up. <laughs> Video game logic. Look at this random nightclub with the neon signs. In downtown Pyongyang. It's like it sticks out like a sore thumb. Anyway. Let's see what this... Oh, I like this. Look at this. Oh, it's nice in here. If I had to move to North Korea, or I was like... Yeah, if I was based there with work, I'd just hang out here all the time. This is cool. Alright, chill out. Alright, chill out. He's got his gun out. Don't underestimate him. He may act like an idiot. But he's a ruthless killer. Oh, he's not very nice, is he, that man? Anyway, let's see. Let's see what the next mission brings in terms of action. We want all the action today. Enemy vehicles with gunners can't be hijacked. Kill the gunner, then you can hijack the vehicle. Okay. So like I said earlier, there is a lot of depth with this game. There's a lot going on, and that's what I loved about it. It's uh, not an RPG element... But if you like collecting stuff and grinding and getting money and upgrading stuff and getting better, more powerful vehicles or bigger, like, tank-like vehicles, Something then this game is cool. I don't trust him. Don't worry, his Lieutenant Joseph is reliable. He did some business and... Yeah, I don't trust him either. He got his gun out on me in the club. There's no need for that, was there? I'm always kicking off downtown, look. He's kicking off. It's... <laughs> I'm going to go back to GTA 5 or GTA Online. <laughs> it's like running around the streets and that, isn't it? <laughs> it's just... 
<laughs> Got planes flying around bombing you for no reason. Right, here we go. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to do. I wasn't really paying attention, but I just think it's blow stuff up again, isn't it? If I shoot then, he's just shooting behind us, the dude on the turret. Right, here we go. Oh, come on, that's not doing anything, look. The reticle's not changing colour. It should be red. Oh, it kind of is, sometimes. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna blow up quick! My health is on one! I'm done out here. I've survived! How have I survived? Like, quick, get to some cover, do something! I need health and I need it quickly. Right, let's do a little sneaky. Let's flank them. Is that the right terminology to use? Flank? Like, get behind them in, in military terms? I think it is. C4 is an effective way to destroy an object, so it's R1 and then R1 again, okay. Oh, I love the dramatic music. I know I keep saying it, but I really do enjoy this music score in this game. So it's these crates, isn't it? These ammo boxes, I think, I've got to blow up. Okay. Or have I got to blow up? Oh, it doesn't matter now, it's too late. I think I've got to blow up the, um... The big green arrow is pointing to them. I can't blow up the turret. I nearly blew up myself. Now I've got to blow up that truck. Okay, I'm going to die. Get cover. Where's the music gone? Oh, it's back. Uh, oh, I want health. So sometimes you'll see health laying around by barracks. I don't know why I said barracks, but by the, like, the shooty places where there's turrets. There'll be ammo supplies and, and med and medicine and that kind of thing at those areas. And I've seen loads of medicine, but when I've had full 100 health, it's typical. Now I can't find any. Oh, hold on. There might be some here. There's ammo. I don't want ammo. I want health. So your energy does refill slowly when it's on or when it's near naught i'm gonna die right let's just bomb this dude deary me uh yeah it replenishes itself is what i mean if i died oh no <laughs> i didn't know what i was doing there there's the ace of clubs he was the Minister of Foreign Affairs. I love this game. It's so, like, it's so addictive. I would love a current day game like this. Like, a current day remake of this would be so much fun. Some would argue Far Cry is the equivalent these days. I don't like the modern Far Cry games, guys. After Far Cry 4, 4 was the last one I enjoyed. Three was my favourite. So after four, there aren't any Far Cry games that I've enjoyed that much. Five was forgettable. I think six is dreadful. Did someone just sneeze? I heard someone sneeze in on my headset. Anyway, let's just go for a drive here. I'm not going to go straight back to that mission yet. Let's see what other goodies are on the map for us. Well, let's just take in some scenery with this beautiful music score. There you go. I'm disguised as the allies now. That's because I think your disguise is dependent on vehicle that you're in. I think that's how it works. So the allies, of course, are the American military. I love the art style in this game. I love the landscapes and stuff. Or rather, the, the countryside scapes and that. It, it feels like you're in North Korea. I like the subtle use of, like, the amber and the red effect. Mist in the background and all. Really cool video game. Let's, let's drive. This is what I would do in GTA, look. Because I'm a crazy man sometimes. I drive on the train tracks. 
yes just cool let me know your memories with this video game if you've played it guys let me know what you thought of the sequel might take a look at the sequel actually for bad video games now we've featured this because i think that will be on the bad video games playlist i think it was that bad i might have to play it for a bit first though and then decide but yeah i'll, I'll, I'll look at that at some point i promise but um that's been mercenaries mercenaries one appetite for destruction no that's the guns and roses album playground for destruction i think this is cool <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant what's going on i'll speak to you all soon guys